mud guards and cool and ugly or an accessory that gives you more vision, control and speed. Now, many two-wheel disciplines have been using mud guards or fenders for decades, but roadies and mountain bikers, nah, way too uncool. Mudguards come in a whole range of shape, sizes and materials. Mudhugger, Z-File, RRP, Crud, Defender all do proper shaped guards starting from around £15. Whereas you can get basic flat pack guards with zip ties for about a fiver. Front mud guards can be all types. They can be plastic, carbon, short, medium and long, basic or complex, bolt on or simply zip tie. From a few quid to over hundred pounds. Now most forks are the same size and shape and pretty much one size fits all for the zip tie versions at least. Although you can get bolt on such as the Defender, which I mentioned earlier. Now rear mud guards are very much the same as front mud guards. However, because of the different suspension designs, it becomes a bit more complex and requiring custom guards for each bike. So a very simple question, how much mud do they actually guard you from? Today, three runs, one with mud guard front and back, one with the mud guard front, and a final run with no protection whatsoever. Now the first run that we're going to be doing today is with a mud guard up front and one on the back. Now this is the first time I have ever ridden a mountain bike with a mud guard on the back, so hopefully this will give us the full protection. It just happens that Jay and Bruce from Mudhugger, who will make these rear mud guards for the lever which I'm riding, uh, are getting fitted. Uh, Bruce, what's all the fuss about? Why, why do we need a hairdryer and, and loads of tape? Um, with the rear mud guards, we always supply heli tape, helicopter tape. Um, it's like very thick frame tape. And you see Jay will wrap it around the stays where the mud guard actually sits, and that protects your paint and your frame finish. So in the Ooh. summer, you can hey, just can take I, can them I off. Can I stop you? It looks like this frame could have done with a bit of protection before. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a bit late for your frame, but you know, <laughs> most frames will be uh, pristine. So, so what happens there, guys? Okay, so. Uh, to find out where you're going to put the mud guard, just literally sit it on the tyre, give it about 10 mil clearance, any close when it gets a bit noisy, certainly when it gets clagged up, and then mark up on your frame where you want your tape to go. It's longer than the foot of there, so that you've got overlap. And then we're just going to zip tie it about there. Can I ask you, why do you need this, this tape here? Did, did, is it, re will it really where the frame was? Yes. Yeah, Seriously? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we've had people use in like in busy frame type of tape yeah. or electrical tape. Yeah, gaffer and tape. And then they email saying that it's gone through the tape and ruined ruin the paint. Wow, crikey. And, uh, it goes right into the net, even our alloy, it goes yeah. straight into alloy. Uh, now, obviously, there's a lot of people out there who will say that rear mud guards are very uncool. Why does it need to be so long? Well, <laughs> Basically, the, the spray comes off the tyre at every imaginable yeah. angle. So you've got to draw an imaginary line from okay. the back of your tyre. Yeah, I get it, I get it. That's yeah. the tip. If it's anything back here, it's going to, it's go, going to go straight into your rucksack. It's just one having one, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, although we're not going to be eating dirt, hopefully, today. <laughs> so uh, let's get us fitted and out on the hill. Okay, run one. Mud gut on the front, mud gut on the back. Clean body, let's see what it looks like when we get to the bottom. I think time for a halfway check. What am I looking? So goggles off. I'm going to do the second half of the run without goggles. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh. oh. so not totally immune to the odd bit of fly muck, but then, unless you've got a big sheet of purse backs in front of your, your bike, there's no way you can stop everything. So there's the evidence of run one. As you can see, front of house there, it's relatively clean. I think the most noticeable thing for me was the lack of mud flying in my face. Out back, well, apart from that little uh, bit of a skirmish I had coming down the bank, um, ignore that patch there. 
it's uh, pretty dry. And you can certainly feel that when you're coming down the hill that your bum is definitely warmer than you would be riding with no mud guard on the back. Now, I mentioned earlier that we'd be doing three runs. First run with mud guard front and back, then the second run with the mud guard just on the front. However, what we decided to do, because of the fading light, we're now going to go for mud guard off in the fading light and see how that pans out. Run two, here we go. Now, I do not know what I look like from head to toe, but what I do know is that only after one minute of that track, I can hardly see out of these goggles. So, I think for me, the mud guard is definitely a benefit. One of the other things I can feel uh, compared to the first one with the mud guard, I've actually got a load of grit in my mouth, and that can't be a very good thing because if you think about all the oil and all the grit and all the bacteria which are on those pedals, that can't be good for you. So, Brandon, how am I looking from head to toe? Um, didn't, look, didn't look too dissimilar to the first one, right up front? Yeah, it's, it's more muddy. Okay, and what about the back? Wow, I've just picked this suit up and the weight difference between this and the first one is absolutely massive. It actually casts my mind back to when I rode Sam Blenkinsop's uh, Yeti downhill bike in Schladming about 10 years ago. We actually weighed the mud on the bike between the bike being clean and it being dirty after one run. I think there was like two or three kilograms of mud on the bike. So remember that the mud guard will actually keep the mud off your bike as well as protect you from the elements. I definitely think there's only one winner on this, right? <laughs> Do you know what? I feel like I'm working for a washing powder advert. Well, mudguard versus no mudguard. It's probably one of those videos where the results probably speak for themselves. But for me, I definitely think when it comes to vision and control, that front mudguard has a big effect on your speed down the hill. Remember, this is just one track on one day. The results on another eight day could be completely different. I genuinely believe that because it's so wet today that it actually has made the results actually probably more close than it might have been. I certainly think that when the tracks dry out and they get really sloppy, that's when you're going to see uh, the difference really exacerbated between mudguard and no mudguard. Um, so that's about it, I think. Uh, yeah, like I said, the results pretty much speak for themselves. Let's know your thoughts on mudguard versus no mudguard. Do you actually use mudguard? Do you actually use a rear mudguard? For me, that was the big, um, big eye opener on this ride. You definitely feel a warmer bum when you're going through those through those puddles. And like I said, a lot of people ride in the dark, so it doesn't actually matter what the bike looks like. It's all about practicality, not about uh, fashion. Give thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to hit my globe. Subscribe to EMBN to see more e-mountain bike videos.